you will need internet access for this course. Let's review the learning objectives for industrial organizational psychology. First, understand the history of industrial organizational psychology and its integration into the broader discipline. Two, develop an understanding of the major content areas in the field of industrial organizational psychology. Three, develop knowledge of how psychological principles and theories apply to issues at the workplace. Four, develop an understanding of how research methods and critical thinking are used to study organizations and human behavior within organizations. What is industrial and organizational psychology? The term industrial organizational psychology can be applied to businesses, schools, clubs, and even to sports teams. Psychology as a field is composed of many different areas. When thinking of psychology, the person on the street probably imagines this, the clinical psychologist who studies and treats dysfunctional behavior, or maybe they're thinking about the criminal psychologist who has become familiar due to popular TV shows such as Law and Order. Industrial organizational psychology may be underrepresented on television, but it is a fast-growing and influential branch of psychology. So what is industrial organizational psychology? Briefly, it can be defined as the scientific study of behavior in organizational settings and the application of psychology to understand work behavior. In other words, while general psychology concerns itself with behavior of individuals in general, industrial organizational psychology focuses on understanding employee behavior in work settings. For example, they ask questions such as, how can organizations recruit and select the people they need in order to remain productive? How can organizations assess and improve the performance of their employees. What work and non-work factors contribute to happiness, effectiveness, and well-being of employees in the workplace? How does work influence non-work behavior and happiness? What motivates employees at work? All of these important queries fall within the domain of industrial organizational or IO psychology. What are some career options in industrial organizational psychology? As you write in your book, industrial organizational psychologists work in a variety of settings that include education, research, and even government organizations. The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that industrial organizational psychology as a field is expected to grow 26% by the year 2018. So the job outlook for industrial and organizational psychologists would be good. Helping organizations understand and manage their workforce more effectively using science-based tools is important regardless of the shape of the economy and industrial organizational psychology as a field remains a desirable career option for those who have interest in psychology in a work-related context coupled with an affinity for research methods as well as statistics. If you would like to refer yourself as a psychologist in the United States you would need to be licensed, and this requirement also applies to industrial and organizational psychologists. Licensing 
requirements vary by state. And you can look these up at various organizations. However, it may also be possible to pursue a career related to industrial organizational psychology without holding the title psychologist. Licensing requirements often include a doctoral degree in psychology. That said, there are many opportunities for those with master's degree in industrial organizational psychology or in related fields, such as organizational behavior and human resource management. Academics and practitioners who work in industrial organizational psychology or related fields are often members of the Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology. We will look at this uh, uh, link together. Students with interest in industrial organizational psychology are often eligible to become affiliate members of this organization even if they are not pursuing a degree related to industrial organizational psychology. Membership may bring benefits, including networking opportunities and subscriptions to academic journals and newsletters. The organization may support its members by providing a forum for information and exchange of ideas, as well as monitoring developments about the field for its members. This is an independent organization, but also a subdivision of the American Psychological Association, or APA, which is a scientific organization that represents psychologists in the United States. Different regions in the world have their own associations for industrial organizational psychologists, and we will look at some of these together over the semester. For example, the European Association for Work and Organizational Psychology is a premier organization for industrial and organizational psychologists in Europe, where IO psychology is typically referred to as work and organizational psychology. A global federation of IO psychology organizations named the Alliance for Organizational Psychology was also recently established. It currently has three member organizations. The Association for Psychological Sciences, APS, is another association to which many industrial organizational psychologists belong. Those who work in the I.O. field may be based at a university teaching and research, researching industrial organizational related topics. Some private organizations employing I.O. psychologists include DDI, HMRRO, and Corporate Executive Board and IBM Smarter Workforce. These organizations engage in services such as testing, performance management, and administering attitude surveys. Many organizations also hire in-house employees with an expertise in I.O. psychology-related fields to work in departments including human resources, human resource management, or what is referred to as people analytics. According to a 2011 membership, membership survey at the SIOP, the largest percent of members were employed in academic institutions, followed by those in consulting or independent practice, private sector organizations, and public sector organizations. Moreover, the majority of respondents, 86%, were not licensed. 